racing today. Yesterday, the ARCA Remax Series. Scott Speed on the pole and leading, battling with this guy, Justin Allgaier, throughout the early portion of the race. But problems here for Speed. A green flag pit stop because of a left front tire issue. The second time this would happen to him today, he would rally back to the front, running in the top five late. Green, white, checker finish, and check this out. Justin Lofton gets out of shape. Rob Brent spins as well. That would allow Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to pull away. First driver this year to pick up multiple wins. Scott Speed comes home second. Start of the race, Audi driver Alan McNish takes third in the first chicane, but Peugeot of Nicholas Manassian would get it back though at the first chicane at the Mulsanne. Hour two, the GT2 class, pole sitter, American Patrick Long, and the Flying Lizard 80 car, Seth Nyman wrecked. Long's day would be over. Still early, hour three, the Peugeot of Christian Clean was in the lead, but he gets black flagged, has a headlight out. They make a driver change. Ricardo Zonta, you see him having problems with the seat belts. Hour 13, the number eight Peugeot of Alex Verts in the pits, the first of a few Peugeot trips to the garage for cleaning out the radiators. Hour 14, the 63 Corvette of Johnny O'Connell is heading into the pits when he runs into the number 33 speedy racing team, Lola Judd. O'Connell would continue. The rain hits Le Mans, track conditions deteriorate, and the number 87 Ferrari spins off. The Orica Judd of Marcel Fossler suffered a wreck and had to be taken to the hospital earlier in the night. Hour 15, the number two Audi of Tom Christensen comes into the pits at the same time as the number seven Peugeot of Marc Genet. And after the stops, the number two Audi takes the overall lead. Hour 16, the number eight Peugeot of Wurtz would pit to put on some rear body work. We jump ahead to hour 18. This is a spin by the number eight with Pedro Lamy behind the wheel in a Peugeot at Arnage. He narrowly misses another car. Hour 22, close call here for race leader Tom Christensen. He spins after hitting the number 32 Zytec. Christensen, though, keeps it going. This is our leader. Let's take a look at the view from his onboard camera. Well, Chris, at the end of the race, checkered flag waves in the number two Audi R10 of Alan McNish. Ronaldo Capello and Tom Christensen win Le Mans. McNish, Capello, and Christensen celebrate on the podium. The World of Outlaws Late Models Wild West Tour open Wednesday night, Deer Creek Speedway in Minnesota. Pole sitter Tim Fuller leading into turn one, but Fuller's night ended early with engine difficulties. Big engine difficulties. That left fellow front row starter Brian Burkhofer to take over the lead. He would have to hold off a late run from points leader Darrell Lanigan, who charged from 10th to 2nd in the closing laps. But in the end, Burkhofer, using a chassis he built himself, hung on to win the Gopher 50 at Deer Creek. Here's Sarah Jane Hunt with the winner. World of Outlaws made, uh, Late Models made their second appearance at Eldora on Friday night, and it was an eventful day for track owner Tony Stewart as he was involved in two separate incidents before the night's main event. Speaking of the main, the Subway 50, it gets underway, and the second place starter, Earl Pearson Jr., taking the lead from pole sitter Steve Francis, heading into one. Tony Stewart's troubles at Eldora would continue as he suffers car trouble, slows, he would end up finishing 17th. Now let's go back up front. Pearson was untouchable in the number 44, winning and keeping his record of two wins in two late model races at Eldora intact. Well done. Well, the late models race again under the lights on Saturday at Sharon Speedway as Tim McCready, starting on the outside of the front row, takes the lead from the pole sitter Clint Smith heading into turn one. McCready would lead the first five laps. Later on, lap 44, Jeremy Miller running sixth, suffers engine trouble and says, I'm going to just stop it right here. That brings out the yellow. On the restart, Donnie Moran in the number 99 takes the lead from a slowing Billy Moyer who suffers mechanical problems. That opens the door for the million dollar man to stretch out his lead and pull away to win in Ohio his first World of Outlaws win this year. Donnie Moran brings home the win tonight here at Sharon Speedway. 
tough track conditions, difficulties with the car. How did you get up front? Well, we, uh, you know, qualified pretty decent when we went out, uh, run second or heat race, and we drove pill three, and that started us up front. Uh, got the lead there early, and the lap car kind of messed me up a little bit, and Billy got the lead on us, and he had a little bit of misfortune, and, and things worked our way. The World of Outlaw Late Model Series drivers and teams have been through a whirlwind across the Great Northern Tour through Ohio Speed Weeks. There have been a lot of torn up race cars, parts and pieces banged up, motors blown. And the big test will come on Tuesday at Lernerville Speedway to see who has anything left to take home the $40,000 check. The number two Audi has been the number one car in the American Le Mans series this year and after a dominant result at Mid-Ohio last time out, Marco Werner and Lucas Lua wanted back-to-back -back overall wins. But at Road America this weekend, there was a surprise from Andretti Green's P2 Acura. And that surprise was Frank Montagni splitting the Audis in qualifying, but too much straight-line grunt from Emmanuele Pirro got him by the Frenchman as he followed his teammate into Turn 1. Scary moment for Gilles Deferre, and he collides with the GT40 Ford of Lazaro, and that caused the first yellow. Another hard-in-the-mouth moment. Rookie James Rossiter drives the AGR Acura off at the carousel, but miraculously, he continues. Lap 82, the number four Corvette of Ollie Gavin goes off course on the back stretch, loses the class lead to teammate Magnussen and exposes Road America's signed recycling program. Six laps later, heartbreak for second place Adrian Fernandez. He suffers rear suspension failure, hits the gravel and almost went over. That caused another caution. Check this out, Marco Werner on the restart with the pass of the day. Frank Montagne and David Brabham had nothing for the awesome speed of the Audi R10. Same lap and a little later, Frank Montagne low percentage move collides with a GT2 car and that cost him a class win. Frustration. Final lap, Fan Bacalol's Porsche driven by Dirk Werner defends. Salo goes for the big move, spins and back out front Marco Werner takes the overall win with teammate Marcel Fassler who great ALMS debut finish following him home. Marco Werner and Lucas Lure make it win number six in the 2008 ALMS season. And Marco, this one, you finally get an overall win back at Road America again, but this one was not easy, was it? No, it wasn't easy. But uh, at the end, everything was fine and happy day for Audi, so we are very happy. Uh, what you mean maybe is the, the last uh, yellow, and then I was sticking behind these Acuras. They give me a lot of dirty air. And so I lost the downforce. I was with all four wheels in the old Toyota bridge corner on the grass, and but I managed. This came back fighting hard, and then we hit the traffic with the GT car, and I did a nice move on the straight with the TDI power. Diesel power wins overall at Road America for the first time since 2006. In P2, David Brabham and Scott Sharp scored their third P2 victory of the season, and they're still in that championship hunt and well done to Farnbacher Lowell's Racing it took its maiden GT2 victory in the series. And we keep things in the family this week's Carfax Fact of the Week courtesy of the American Le Mans series. Last year's overall win by the Porsche RS Spider of Timo Bernard and Romain Dumas marked the only time a car other than an Audi has taken the overall win at Road America. You've been watching the Speed Report driven by BF Goodrich Tires. Take control.